Hallelujah. Y'all doing well this morning? Welcome to Herod Your Faith. Everybody stand up on your feet. Are you ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be filled up this morning? Are you excited that the opportunity that we have to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? You know, Psalm 46 says, there is a river that makes glad the city of our God. Amen. There is a river. And last week we talked about there's no river like his river. You know what? There's something different about his water that natural water can't provide. You know what? His water brings life. His water brings healing. His water brings joy. His water brings peace. So there's a river in this place this morning. Are you ready to release your faith and what God has for you this morning? Just lift your hands to heaven. Father, we just welcome your presence in this place today. Holy Spirit, you are here as a sacred guest. And Father, we thank you for manifestations, demonstrations, and visitations, Father. We thank you, Father, for the greater. We thank you for the greater. Thank you for more and more miracles, more and more deliverances, more and more signs signs and wonders, more and more finances coming to your people so you can, we can do more for the kingdom of God. We rejoice in what you want to do in this place today. So we rejoice in it and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, come on, put your hands together.
Woo, say it again. Say, I'm alive. Ho, oh, you've got a river of living water. Amen? And when it flows out of you, it makes glad the cities of God. Amen? Amen? You want to be glad? Let that river flow. Whew. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We worship you this morning. Ha. We let our rivers flow in you this morning. Hallelujah. I have heard the sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and Come on, sing it out. He is faithful. 
daddy's lap and we just need to be with him amen so just take a minute to crawl up in daddy's lap and just love on him and let him love on you
Jesus, we love you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you into our hearts, Father, this morning. We trust you. We, we lay ourselves wide open, wide open. hearts wide open. And just open up your hearts. Amen. Let Abba Daddy do open heart surgery this morning in ways that you need. Let him dig around in there. Let him get deep. Amen. You've never
Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands, if you will. Thank you, Father. Just call him Father right now. Heavenly Father. When I think about his faithfulness to me, I'm telling you, it's hard to hold back the tears. I'm coming up on 47 years of walking with the Lord. Next month. 47 years, and I can say he's never failed me. Never, never failed me. It makes me feel like I must be his favorite child. When I think of all the Lord has done, all the places he's taken me, all the things I've experienced in those 46 years so far, absolutely amazing. Amazing. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. I want everyone in here to be able to have that testimony. That he's never failed you never failed you. Hallelujah. That's one of the things I love about him the most. He's faithful. He's faithful. True to his word. If you're determined that you're going to take him at his word, then you will have the testimony. He's never failed me. Never failed me. Hallelujah. Can you give him the best shout you got this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, praise has a way of penetrating barriers. Praise has a way of bringing down walls. There's some things that will never manifest in your life until you decide, I'm just going to praise Him anyway. Come on. Some of you have some barriers and some walls that need to come down. Just go ahead and praise Him anyway. Praise Him anyway. Hallelujah. 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 When you praise God anyway, that's like slapping the devil in the face. And tell him what you say does not have any bearing on what I'm going through because I know when it's all said and done, I'll come out on the other side victorious. Amen. Come on, praise your way to victory. Praise your way to victory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Glory to the Lord. Praise God. And you get uncomfortable around people that love to shout unto God, you're going to be miserable in heaven. There's going to be a lot of shouting up there. And I'm not going to wait to do all my shouting till I get there. I'm going to get in some practice down here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, I've got some good, good news for you. 2016 is the year of the great breaking loose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some things you've been believing for for a long time are going to break loose this year. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor's smile real big. Tell at least
least three or four people. It's breaking loose time. Hallelujah. Amen. Breaking loose time. Breaking loose time. Thank you. Praise God. You can be seated. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I'm excited this morning. How about you? You got your Bibles with you? All of you that are watching by way of live stream, we welcome you into the service. And uh, either loosen your seatbelt or fasten it one or the other. Because it might get a little wild in here. Hallelujah. We love praising God. We love the Word of God, don't we? Amen. I got a lot of territory to cover today. In fact, what the Lord's given me to share with you is going to take two Sundays, today and next Sunday. Amen. So you get ready. I've just come off vacation, and uh, I am ready to preach. <laughs> Praise God. Most of you already know the prophetic word that the Lord has given me for 2016. Let me rephrase that. Has given us for 2016, and not limited to heritage of faith, but to the body of Christ all over the world. But for review purposes, and for the benefit of those of you that might not have heard it yet, I want to read it to you. Extraordinary things are taking place in the heavenlies, and 2016 will come to be known as the year of the great breaking loose. More and more notable miracles will break loose in the earth. More and more signs and wonders. More and more angelic visitations. More and more instant healings more and more deliverances from demonic activity, more and more finances will break loose so my people can do more for the kingdom, saith the Lord. And during this time of the great breaking loose, the enemy will no longer be able to hold back that which my faithful ones have stood in faith for, not even the things that looked as though they would never come to pass. For I will cause them to break loose and to suddenly manifest and to do so in such a way that no one will be able to deny, <clears throat> excuse me, no one will be able to deny the greatness of your God. Yes, 2016 will be a year in which the faithful shall be rewarded beyond their highest expectations, and they shall abound in my blessings as never before. Can you give the Lord a shout over that? Amen. Now, I especially want you to notice, once again, the part about more and more finances breaking loose so that we can do more and more for the kingdom of God. I was meditating on that during my vacation time and praying over it. Every morning, uh, I get up and I, I, I walk uh, from about 6 to almost 8 in the morning. And that's my time to, to meditate, to pray, just devotion time with the Lord. And as I was walking, and I might add, it doesn't hurt to be on the beach of Honolulu, hallelujah. <laughs> as I was walking and meditating and praying and just listening to the Lord, I heard him say this about this more and more finances so that we can do more for the kingdom. He said, this includes the promise that I made to those who are faithful tithers. The windows of heaven will open for them as never before. And a great breaking loose will occur, which will cause a flood of finances to come into their hands beyond anything they've ever imagined. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read that again. This includes the promise that I made, the Lord said, to those who are faithful tithers, the windows of heaven will open for them as never before, and a great breaking loose 
will occur, which will cause a flood of finances to come into their hands beyond anything they have ever imagined. You know, um, when I got home a couple of days ago, yesterday I went to my office to uh, um, pick up a few things that was on my desk, discovered there was a whole lot of mail waiting for me. <laughs> and the first letter that I picked up that was on my desk, I, I really didn't go over there to start working yet. Uh, I just wanted to uh, pick up a few things that I knew were waiting for me because I'd been out a couple of weeks. But I'd, I noticed a stack of letters on my desk uh, that uh, my secretaries had determined that I needed to see because I can't read every letter that comes in the ministry and answer them all uh, myself. But they determine a lot of times which ones need my um, attention. And, and several of them that had not been opened, but they were addressed personal to Jerry Savelle. So they honor that. So the first one that was on my desk, I thought was very interesting. After I read it, there was a check in there for $100,000. I think I've had some breaking loose take place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You say, wow, $100,000. But listen, just before Christmas, I sold $100,000 into another ministry. In fact, I think we've sold over a million dollars in 2015 into other ministries. Now, that means if what I'm hearing from the Lord is true, and I know it is, my harvest. I said, my harvest. Just from 2015 alone is beyond comprehension. And he just said, that he's going to open windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, and cause a flood of finances. Back in 1981, I believe it was, uh, we were at Kenneth Hagin's camp meeting in Tulsa, and Brother Oral Roberts came. And uh, he wasn't one of the scheduled speakers, but Brother Hagin invited him to speak that night. And I'll never forget the sermon as long as I live. And he was talking about tithing and sowing. And he made the statement that when the windows of heaven are open to you, God will pour out blessing upon your life. He will open the floodgates and pour out blessings upon your life. He said, not a trickle, not a stream, not a river, but a flood. I love that. Say that with me. Not a trickle. Not a stream, not a river, but a flood. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting in flood stage. Hallelujah. I thought it was very interesting. I just came off vacation. The first letter I opened, and I'm already in flood stage. Hallelujah. I can hardly wait to open those other envelopes. Praise God. Amen. Now, you say, well, why would God do that to you? Because he honors his word. And I'm a doer of the word. Amen. Now, you're all familiar with where God made this promise to the tither. But let's go ahead and read it again. Malachi chapter 3. Now, once again, we've got a lot of territory to cover, so take notes. <clears throat> and endeavor to pay attention while you're doing it. <laughs> And consider uh, getting a copy of the message later so you can study it again. Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Underline that phrase. That if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And the New Living Translation says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Hallelujah. 
The message translation says, see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessing beyond your wildest dreams. Can anybody dream big in here? God says bigger than that. Beyond your wildest dreams. I can dream pretty big. But he says beyond that. Hallelujah. Now that's the promise to the tither. And I might add this phrase, the faithful tither. Everybody say faithful. Faithful. The faithful tither. So how many of you are ready for some of that? Praise God. In fact, if you're a faithful tither, you ought to be shouting right now. Praise God. Amen. Let me emphasize once again, faithful being the key word here. Faithful implies being constant, consistent. It speaks of true fidelity and loyalty to the Word of God. One dictionary defined it as a strict adherence. A strict adherence. And of course, we're talking about a strict adherence to what God's Word says. Strict adherence means no deviating and no compromising. No deviating and no compromising. That means I tithe faithfully 10% of my income without question. You ought to be glad God said you could keep the 90. I discovered a long time ago, and I know a lot of other people that uh, found out the same thing, that you can keep 100% and it won't go as far as the 90%. Amen. So strict adherence means no deviating, no compromising. You might be thinking, but Brother Jerry, I don't think I can do that. Yes, you can. But it will require a quality decision on your part, and at the same time, it's going to require unrelenting determination. You just have to make up your mind that you're going to do this. If you you settle it once and for all, you don't have to deal with it anymore. I haven't dealt with should I tithe or should I not in a long, long time. I made that decision when I got into the Word of God, when I surrendered my life to the Lord. I I made the decision because I saw it in the Word. And he told me to be a doer of the word if I wanted to be blessed. Amen. So I made the decision that I'm going to tithe. Tithing is going to become lifestyle. Not an experiment that I try for a few weeks, but it's going to become lifestyle. Amen. And, And I went so far as to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to do this. If I never see those windows open, I'm going to do it anyway in honor of you. And he said, with that kind of commitment, I'll see to it the windows open for you. But you got to have the attitude, I'm going to do it if I never get any better off. Amen. I'm going to do it if I never experience a financial breakthrough. Like uh, Brother Copeland's daddy, A.W. Copeland, said to me years ago, He said, Jerry, if I found out that the Bible's not true, God doesn't exist, Jesus isn't real, I'd keep living this way anyway because it works. (laughs) I thought that's wisdom, isn't it? Amen. That's that's a a right attitude. So once again, strict adherence. Now, a lot of people don't like anything that they have to do consistently. Amen? We don't even like the word strict. (laughs) Most Christians today don't like the word discipline. It's what a true disciple is, a disciplined one. Amen? Amen? That's what a disciple is, someone who practices discipline. They've disciplined themselves to let the Word of God be final authority in every area of their lives. They've disciplined themselves to have the attitude, 
if the word says do it, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to live that way. Amen. You know, there are some people that are hard to love, but the Bible tells me to walk in love. So I got to do it. And, and I've discovered some people I do real good at loving them from a distance. Amen. Like one person said to me one time, I know you love me because the word says you have to. I just don't think you like me. I said, well, I didn't find anywhere in there where I had to like you. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to love you, praise God. <laughs> so I, I walk in love because the word says to. I forgive because the word says to. I bless because the word says to. I put a guard over my mouth because the word says to. I cast down imaginations that don't agree with the word of God because the word says to. I lay hands on the sick because the word says to. Amen. In other words, I've, I am disciplining myself to do or to adhere to what the Word of God says. And if you're going to call yourself a doer of the Word, then it has to include tithing. And I'm not going to get into an argument about whether it's from the law or it passed away when you know, the New Testament came in. There's no argument about it. Tithing came before the law. Come on. That's right. God never intended for it to be something that we do for a season and then we're over it. God intended for it to be lifestyle. Tithing is a principle that God established not so he'd have a way to take from you, but so he'd have a way to bless you beyond your own ability. Hallelujah. Supernatural blessing. Can you say amen? Now, strict adherence, no deviating, no compromising. And you can do this if you make a quality decision and if you are unrelenting in your determination. Now, as you know, Satan will do everything he possibly can to talk you out of it. And believe me, he can come up with some really good excuses. You've heard them all. We've all heard them all. And let's remember that his excuses come in the form of thoughts. He doesn't show up in your bedroom you know, with horns, a fork, and a red cape and say, you can't tithe this week. All of his excuses come in the form of thoughts. This is where the real battle is, up here. Amen. Thoughts. I can't tithe because... I won't have enough to pay the light bill. I won't have enough to buy groceries. I won't have enough to do this. Those are excuses that Satan uses, and if he sees that you will fall for them, then it gets easier over a period of time, and the next thing you know, this is not even something you practice at all. Amen? Amen? The, the smartest thing you can do is to set the tithe aside. Get it out of your regular funds. We have a tithe account for this church. We have a tithe account for Jerry Smell Ministries International. We take the tithe and we put it in those accounts and we don't use them for the light bill. We don't use them for payroll. We don't use them to buy a new carpet. We use them to bless other people and bless other ministries and bless the poor and bless the widow and to help meet needs. Amen. Amen. I pray over where that tithe goes. There, there are certain ministries that this church and, and Jerry Savelle Ministries is partner with. 
and we, we take out of that tithe account every month, faithfully, a certain amount that I told them that I would send them every month. Yes. And they get it every month without fail. Right. Now, there have been a few times over the years where we could have used that money ourselves. <laughs> we had needs arise and we could have used it. But the quickest way for you to lose your job with me <laughs> is mess with my tithe. <laughs> when I'm ready to send uh, someone something the Lord's put on my heart to send them and I ask how much do we have in our tithe account and then I find out it's been used on something else I'll forgive you once <laughs> don't mess with the tithe you know, around here we got a phrase, don't mess with Texas. Well, don't mess with my tithes. Amen. Because that, that does not, that is not to be used on anything other than sowing. And being a way to bless other people, bless other ministries, praise God. Amen. And we have a strict adherence to that. So, Satan will come up with excuses as to why you can't do it. And once again, he's the world's best at coming up with excuses as to why you can't do it. A, 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 a good example of this, a type and shadow, you might say, is found in Genesis chapter 15. Let's, let's go back there and look at something. Genesis chapter 15. The Lord showed me this years ago. I was preaching at Mac Hammond's church and uh, the Lord showed me this and I remember preaching it there and, and uh, it made a, a big impact. In Genesis 15, beginning in verse 7, God is, is entering into covenant with Abram. And he says to him, <clears throat> I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees to give thee <clears throat> excuse me, this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And notice God is entering into a blood covenant with Abram. You know, he changed his name to Abraham. And God tells him what to do with all these animals. Tells him to divide them. But then as Abram is following God's instructions, it goes on to tell us that birds of prey would swoop down and try to take Abram's sacrifice before he could offer it to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Birds of prey would swoop down and try to take part of his sacrifice before he could offer it to God. And the Bible says that Abram drove them away. Yes. To drive birds of prey away, that is not a passive thing. He had to be very aggressive at it. You know, I don't know what he used. I don't know if he picked up a stick, or he just used his hands, or he threw rocks. I don't know, but the Bible says he drove them away. He didn't stand there and say, well, if it had been the will of God for me to offer this sacrifice, the birds wouldn't have come around. He drove them away. They'd swoop down and he's having to drive them away. This is what should be happening in every church service. When it's tithe and offering time, 
we ought to see people doing this. <laughs> and then we know thoughts are coming into their mind trying to talk them out of giving their tithes and offerings. <laughs> Amen. It's tithe and offering time. <laughs> You're casting down those thoughts. You're driving them out. Amen. I think that's a good illustration, praise God. In fact, Next time I preached at Mac Hammond's church when it's time to receive the offering, everybody went to doing this. <laughs> so if they do that in a few Sundays, Justin, you'll know they're casting down and driving out the birds of prey. Amen. Don't let Satan's excuses keep you from faithfully honoring God with your tithes. Passing the tithing test is what sets you up for future prosperity beyond your wildest dreams. That's what the message translation said. See if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. I call that a great breaking loose. Now let me point out that you'll find the phrase windows of heaven or a derivative of it in five different scriptures. First of all, here in Malachi 3.10. Secondly, and we'll look at this a little closer in Genesis 7, verse 11. It's also mentioned in Isaiah 24, 18. It's a little different wording. It says, windows from on high. And then you'll find it mentioned twice in 2 Kings chapter 7, in verse 2 and in verse 19. Now, let's take a quick look at 2 Kings chapter 7, where this phrase, windows of heaven, is used, and once again, it's used twice in this particular book and this particular chapter. Here we find that God's people have come under attack by the enemy. They are totally outnumbered. In the natural, there is no way they can win this battle. Not only that, but the enemy has cut off the supply lines. There is no food in the city. Not even the rich have anything to eat. There's a famine, you might say. And then the prophet Elijah comes along and has a word from God. And he says in verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Now notice this official sitting next to the king. When he heard this word from the Lord out of the mouth of Elijah the prophet, he couldn't believe it. Why? Because what Elijah said by the Spirit of God sounded impossible. There's been no food for days. No one has anything to eat. No one's selling food. In fact, in the natural, they're all just sitting around waiting to die, either from starvation or by the sword of the enemy. And then this word from God comes and says, tomorrow, at this same time, things are going to be different around here. There's going to be a great breaking loose. And the man sitting next to the king just couldn't believe it. Why? It was just too much. In the natural, it was impossible. And so he said, the only way that this could possibly happen, God would have to make windows in heaven and pour out upon us for something like this to take place by this time tomorrow. Yep. Now the point I'm endeavoring to make here is this. The man didn't realize that windows of heaven 
for symbolic with abundance. Windows of heaven were symbolic with the miraculous of God being able to do something beyond your wildest imagination. So he says, the only way that this could possibly happen, God would have to make windows in heaven. And then from those windows in heaven, then I see this could take place. And the prophet said to him, because he didn't believe the word, it'll happen. You'll see it happen, but you won't partake of it. Don't be on the outside, folks. Get in on the inside. But I just don't know how God could, could cause windows of heaven to open in 2016 for me. Well, there's a lot of us going to see it. I don't intend to be out here saying, I just don't think that can happen. I'm going to be right in the middle of it saying, it's going to happen to me. It's going to happen in our house. It's going to happen in our church. It's going to happen in our ministry, praise God. I'm not going to be on the outside watching it happen to everybody else but me because I couldn't believe it. Come on. Well, how is God going to do that? How is God going to pour out finances in my life beyond what I can earn with my hands? <laughs> Folks, you don't get to be called God if you're not capable of doing this. <laughs> Amen? Amen? There, there was a, a, a meeting of several years ago at a major ministry that a number of us were invited to. And they decided that they were going to talk to us who preach about the hundredfold return, that it was not really scriptural, that we were, you know, um, saying things about it that were not accurate. So that's what the meeting was about. And so we sat there and listened. I, I, it was a bunch of us. And I'd made up my mind flying up there. I wasn't going to open my mouth. I'm just going to sit there and listen. And I did for the first two hours. But then it got to a place I couldn't hold back. And one minister said, that hundredfold that Jesus was talking about in the 10th chapter of Mark, that was a metaphor. He didn't really mean that you'll get blessed a hundred times more than what you sow. That was a metaphor. I couldn't, I couldn't hold back. <laughs> Brother Copeland looked over me and said, I thought you said you weren't going to say nothing. I said, I, I wasn't going to say anything until this came up. He said, Brother Jerry, you have something to say? I said, yes, sir. Would you mind telling me what a field full of metaphor looks like? <laughs> he said, what? I said, I'd like to know what a field full of metaphor looks like. He said, what are you talking about? I said, Genesis 26. Isaac sowed in famine and reaped the same year a hundredfold. He increased in herds and cattle and flocks and sheep and gold and silver and crops. I said, it didn't say anything about, and he had a hundredfold fill of metaphor. He just bad his eyes at me like... I didn't know that was in the Bible. <laughs> and then another minister said, Brother Jerry, you telling me that you've received a hundredfold on every seed you've sown? I said, not yet, but it's not over. I said, in fact, when Carol and I first started, tenfold wouldn't help us at all. I mean, if we sowed ten dollars, might be all we had, and we had to rake and scrape to come up with $10. You know, 10 times 10 is 100. That wouldn't help us at all. We had to believe for 100 fold to exist. I said, I've experienced 100 fold many times, multitudes of times. And just because I haven't experienced it on every seed, I'm not giving up on it because the Bible said 100 fold. And I'm not giving up until I have hundredfold. Yes, Amen. 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 So 
Notice here, this man said, I can't believe that. Well, I've noticed everybody that doesn't believe in a hundredfold doesn't receive it. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Come on. Amen. I, guess, I guess I took those words of Kenneth Copeland to heart the first time I heard him preach, 1969. Closing remarks. If you believe it, it'll work. If you don't, it won't. Good night. That's just the way I am about it. If you believe it, it'll work. If you don't, it won't. Good night. Amen. You don't, you don't get the promised blessings when you don't believe. You get the promised blessings when you do believe. Even if it's stretching your faith to its max. then just stretch it. Can you say amen? amen? So once again, this man realized that in order for something like this to happen, it would take the windows of heaven to open up. So once again, the point is, the windows of heaven represented abundance beyond human comprehension. I want you to write that down. The windows of heaven opening up represents abundance beyond human comprehension. Imagine, anybody ever been to the Hoover Dam? Have you, have you stopped and just walked across that thing? You know, or stopped and just looked down at it? Oh my goodness. First time I got to do that, I was just in awe of how massive it is and all the water that it's holding back. Now just imagine, if you can, the Hoover Dam opening the floodgates and torrents of water coming out of those gates beyond containment. Now, at the same time, imagine financial blessing being that water coming out of that dam out of those floodgates. Beyond containment. Why does God want to bless us more than we can contain? So we can't consume it on ourselves. Amen? So that there's so much left over you just have to find others to share it with. Remember when the first meeting that Jesus had with Peter, Peter was still a fisherman, Simon, the fisherman. And they'd been fishing all night and hadn't caught anything. And Jesus was teaching the crowd, and he asked Peter if he could borrow his boat for a moment. His partners, James and John and Mr. Zebedee, they were all washing nets. They were done. They hadn't taken anything. They were tired, worn out, hadn't taken anything. They're probably sad. Grieved, it's a bad day in business. They just want to go home. And Jesus says, let me borrow your boat for a moment. And he got in Peter's boat and he finished his sermon. Then he turned to Peter and he said, now launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Peter said, master, we've been fishing all night long, haven't taken anything. Nevertheless, at thy word. <laughs> Boy, that was where the breakthrough came. <laughs> Nevertheless, at thy word, bring ye all the tithes. Lord, I tried that, but nevertheless, at thy word, bring ye all the tithes. Lord, you just don't understand what we're going through this week, but nevertheless, at thy word. And the Bible says that when Peter obeyed, he caught so many fish, his net began to break, his boat began to sink, he couldn't contain it all, so what did he do? He beckoned for his partners to come and take hold of, the, uh, of a portion of it because he couldn't contain it all. God wants you so blessed, you can't contain it all, 
so you have to have others come help you take it in. Give the Lord a shout, hallelujah. Folks, these are not fairy tales. These things really happen. They really happen. Hallelujah. I'd say Peter had a great breaking loose that day. Wouldn't you agree? A great breaking loose. So the windows of heaven represent abundance beyond human comprehension. The windows of heaven represent an outflow of God's blessings showering you in every part of your life. It's God responding to your obedience to his word. Why would anyone want to shut those windows? <laughs> Doesn't make good sense. Someone once said, local, local church members, I didn't say loco, loco. <laughs> some, some are loco, but I'm talking about local church members. <laughs> Local, I'm repeating somebody, okay? <laughs> Local church members who do not tithe don't lose their membership in the church, but they do lose massive blessings. Come on, that's right. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So to shut the windows of heaven, that is loco. Don't that mean crazy? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. You're, you're not, you're not going to lose your membership in the body of Christ if you don't tithe. That's right. But you are going to lose blessings That's right. That's right. that God wants to pour out on you. Tithing is a principle that is, a, that is fundamental to your personal happiness and your financial well-being. Once again, God didn't establish it in order to have a way to take from us. He established it in order to have a way to supernaturally bless us. God promises prosperity to those who faithfully practice this principle. Never look at tithing as a sacrifice, but a privilege. Never look at it as a sacrifice, but a privilege. Look at it as a way for you to give back to God in honor of all the goodness he has bestowed upon you. And in so doing, God will just keep pouring out more of his goodness. That's right. Amen. Amen. In fact, until you're not able to contain it all. The Lamps of Translation from Malachi 3.10 says that he will pour out blessing upon you until you shall surely shout it's enough. <laughs> I love that. Has anybody shouted it's enough yet? Then that means God's not done. God's not done with you yet. The literal translation says, he will empty out to you, holding back nothing and giving to you fully. Holding back nothing. I love that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now remember... This is his promise to faithful tithers. Now the equivalent to Malachi 3.10 in the New Testament is Ephesians 3.20. That he does exceeding abundantly above all and beyond all that we ask or think. Uh, I believe it's the Amplified says that we dare ask, dare think, dare to dream and dare to imagine. So God wants you so blessed that you finally have to say, Lord, it's enough. And if you're not there yet, then God's not finished. I'm not there yet, so God's not finished. He wants to overflow your capacity to receive. God's telling us that he has more in reserve for us than we could possibly imagine even in our wildest dreams. Now, the most the, the other most recognizable verse in the Bible 
that uses the phrase windows of heaven is in Genesis chapter 7 in a reference to the flood in Noah's day. So let's go there for a moment. Genesis chapter 7. Oh, you're going to like this. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. Broken up. Broken up, broken loose. Broken up, broken loose. Broken up, broken loose. There was a great breaking loose in the 600th year of Noah's life. The second month. The 17th day of the month. See, I do that. I write things down. The day, the time, the place, it all happened. When I had a great breaking loose. When I had a great breakthrough. When, when a miracle happened. I, I, I record all that. I journal all that. And notice, all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So notice, when this took place, there was a great breaking up. Or you could say a great breaking loose. The message translation says there was an eruption. There was an eruption. And I love what the dictionary says for eruption. A sudden, violent, spontaneous occurrence. When I read that the other day, first thing I wrote was, wow. And then I wrote under that, I'm declaring that over the harvest from my tithes, I'm saying by faith that uh, I'm a faithful tither and I'm about to experience a sudden, violent, spontaneous occurrence of financial harvest. <laughs> a sudden, violent, spontaneous occurrence of financial harvest. And I come home and boy, it already started. Once again, notice in Noah's day during the flood, there was a great breaking loose. Something had to give in the earth when the windows of heaven opened up. <laughs> Write that down. Something had to give in the earth when the windows of heaven were opened up. The great depths were not heaven. That's representing something happening in the earth. So when the windows of heaven opened up, Something amazing happened in the earth. The earth couldn't contain the flood waters because they were simply too great. No one had ever seen anything like this before. Verse 18 says, The waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. The Bible states that the water rose until all the mountains were completely covered and then some 22 feet above that. The highest mountains in the earth were completely covered and then there was water 22 feet higher than the highest peak. Boy, when the great depths broke up, the windows of heaven were open. You couldn't contain it. Overflow took place. When the windows of heaven are opened up, it produces overflow. Say it with me. Overflow. Overflow. Say it again. Overflow breaks loose when the windows of heaven are open for me. So when the windows of heaven opened, something had to break loose in the earth. And just like the flood in Noah's day, no one nor nothing can stop it. Not bad economy. Not war. Whoever becomes president. 
This don't have anything to do with what's going on in the world. It has everything to do with what we're doing with the word. Amen. So just like in the day of Noah's flood, when the windows of heaven opened and there was a great breaking loose in the earth, no one or nothing could stop it. The Holy Spirit has told us that 2016 will come to be known as the year of the great breaking loose and that the faithful shall be rewarded beyond their highest expectations and they shall abound in God's blessings as never before. The finances that have been laid up for the righteous, the Bible says, are going to break loose. We've seen it happen here and there, but nothing like what we're about to see how it is. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just. The sinner's wealth has a divine appointment with my hands. Amen. <laughs> with your bank account. That's right. If you're faithful. Don't get the idea that every member of the body of Christ will experience this. God wants every member to experience it. But not every member is faithful. The Bible says very clearly, the faithful shall abound with blessings. That's right. The faithful shall abound with blessings. Proverbs 13, 22 says, The wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the righteous. The Amplified says, And it finds its way eventually into their hands. Eventually. I believe eventually has come. Amen. We're living in the time of eventually. Due season, you could call it. We're there, praise God. I encourage you to hold fast to this word from the Lord you've heard. And I encourage you to dare to believe that it can happen to you. Don't be like the man we read about in 2 Kings. He said, I just can't believe this. This is just too big for me to believe. I don't see any way possible for this to happen. Well, he was told, it will happen, and you'll see it happen, but you won't partake of it. Don't be like that guy. Just determine, praise God, once again, if it stretches your faith as far as it can be stretched, just say, Father, I receive it. Amen. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. You just keep feeding your spirit the word of God regarding this, and your faith is going to grow and the next thing you know, it's not nearly as hard to believe it as it was when you first heard it, praise God. Come on. Amen? You can work your way up to it. When Carol and I first started out, you know, we needed everything. Needed everything, particularly when we moved here to go to work with Brother Copeland. I, I went by the place, and I think I told you this uh, some time back. I went by the first house we moved into when we uh, first moved here to go to work with Brother Copeland. When I, when I walked in Brother Copeland's office for my reporting for work, my first day, Brother Copeland says, glad you're here, Jerry. His mother was there and said, it's about time. <laughs> Brother Copeland said, I know you're supposed to be here. I know it's the will of God. In the natural, now his ministry had only been going a couple of years when I met him. He said, in the natural, I can't afford you. But I know God wants you here. And then he said this, and if you ever get paid, it'll be because you use your faith. <laughs> now that was my introduction, day one. <laughs> Amen. If you ever get paid, it'll be because you use your faith. I said, yes, sir. He said, now, so you'll have a point of contact, something that you can put your faith on. I'm stretching it, and I'm going to start you out at $80 a week. 
I had made $80 a week since I was in high school. Yes, sir. But brother, don't you know I needed every dime of that $80 a week. And then, then some. And so he said, now, have you got settled in yet? I said, we, we found a place not too far from here. And, and we're moved in, settled in. He said, well, then we leave tomorrow. And you're going to be gone for three weeks. I left my family with $3. That's all I had. After I moved in that house, gave the man, he wanted $100 a month for it. Gave him $100 for the first month. And he wanted a $100 deposit in case we messed up anything. The place was already messed up. <laughs> we moved in just before they condemned it. $100 a month and a $100 deposit and then whatever it was to turn on the utilities. And Brother A.W. Copeland came by to welcome me and he saw we didn't have a dinette set. He saw we didn't have a refrigerator. I mean, we just, we're just existing, and we got two babies, two daughters that are just toddlers, above toddlers, just a little bit older than that. And he went and, and got us a $25 dinette set, one of them, one of them chrome legs, you remember those? Yeah. And, uh, and somebody at Grace Temple had a camping trailer, and they lived not too far from there, and they brought over their refrigerator out of their camper. It was this big. It held a little bit of bologna and a quart of milk. Is about it. It was for camping. And that's about it. And then when he said, you got, you're going to be gone three weeks. And I got $3 left. And I handed that $3 to Carolyn as I was getting ready to leave. I said... It's all I got. I felt like a dog. My daddy never taught me scriptures growing up, except two. He said, a man that don't work, don't eat. So I learned to work because I like eating. And the second one was, a man that don't take care of his family is worse than an infidel. Well, I, I felt the spirit of an infidel coming on. And I got $3, and I'm going to be gone three weeks. I said, this is all I got. I don't know how, but God's going to take care of you because we know we're right where we're supposed to be. She said, you don't worry about me and the girls. You go on and you do what God's called you to do and God will take care of us. And I got in that Buick Wildcat station wagon he had with all his stuff in it and I took off going to Portsmouth, Virginia. You never forget these things. Portsmouth, Virginia. And uh, Carolyn went to Grace Temple the next morning. Now at that time, she's wearing cut down maternity dresses. That's all she has. Because she had two babies 13 months apart. And all she had to wear was the maternity dresses she had and she cut them down where they'd fit her. I had one suit that a lady bought me before I moved here in a rummage sale, paid $15 for it. I was watching The Untouchables one night and I saw Al Capone in that suit. <laughs> it was 100% wool, double-breasted. All I needed was the violin case and a machine gun. <laughs> but it was a suit. That's it. And I had three shirts and two ties. So that meant I could change my wardrobe up, see? We had the same suit, just a different shirt and different tie. And I left for that trip. And Carolyn went to church the next morning for that $3. And when it came time for tithes and offerings, she took the $3 and put it in the plate. Gave it all. That's right. You see, if it doesn't meet a need, 
then your attitude should be, it's now a seed. If it doesn't meet my need, it is now a seed. So she sold that $3. And when she got home, she was getting ready to put her dress away. And she just reached in the pocket to see if she'd put anything in the pocket. And she pulled out a $50 bill. Somebody, while she was in that service, had slipped that money in her, her pocket. And she didn't even know it. So she went to church that night and gave $5 out of that 50 because that's the tithe. Yes, and God took care of her for three weeks. <laughs> now, the first week we were out, the first week I was out, I mean, the first two weeks I was out because we were supposed to get paid every two weeks. <laughs> Man, it's, it's time for my $80. And I'm on the road with Brother Copeland and, and, and I'm thinking they're going to Somebody's going to call Carolyn and let her come and get it, you know, because I knew she'd need it. Well, nobody said anything about it. So it's, it's two weeks' time, paydays today, and I'm in that little hotel room in Portsmouth, Virginia. No, now we're in, uh, uh, what's that other town up there about Portsmouth? Roanoke. We were in Roanoke now in the hotel. And uh, the walls were thin. The Copelands were on the other side of me, and I could hear everything they talked about. <laughs> so I tried to be real quiet because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to mess, mess up anything, you know. I was respectful of them. And so, uh, man, I'm over there confessing the word. I need my $80. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, man, I'm going at it like a buzzsaw over here. But a quiet buzzsaw, man, you know, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, devil, I loose you, angels, you know, I'm, man, I'm going for it. And in small rooms, so I'd, I'd hit the wall, and then I'd turn around and go back this way. And, and I'm confessing the word over that $80. I need my $80. And Brother Copeland, I guess he probably heard me, and he called, and he said, come over to my room. I went over to the room, and he said, didn't I tell you if you ever get paid, it'd be because you use your faith? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, Daddy called a little while ago. He had enough to pay all the bills. And there wasn't enough to pay your salary. He said, are you using your faith? I wanted to ask. I didn't. Did you get paid or am I the only one not getting paid? <laughs> I didn't ask. I wanted to. Uh, am I the only one not getting paid here? He said, if you want your pay, you better use your faith. I said, yes, sir. I thought I was. I left there, man. I picked up the pace. And I'm, <laughs> man, I'm quoting everything. Maps, contents, uh, definitions, everything. I'm going from Genesis to Revelation, man. I'm, I don't care who hears me now. You, you're going, I don't care. You're going to hear me. I got to have my $80. <laughs> well, that night we went to the meeting. Brother Copeland didn't say a thing while I was driving him there. Didn't say a thing when I drove him back to the hotel. I got up the next morning, took him to the meeting. He didn't say anything. But at lunch he said, uh, by the way, uh, Daddy called yesterday after you left the room and said he was walking out the office door and there was a man on the other side and he said uh, when he got ready to walk out, the man said, A.W., Forgive me, I meant to bring this over here earlier today and I just didn't get around to it and I was hoping I'd catch you before you close. He said, here, take this. And he said there was enough money to pay the salaries. So you got paid. Carolyn got you $80. I said, praise God. And then I thought, and I guess he perceived my thoughts. I thought, why didn't you tell me that yesterday? And then he said this, Glory and I heard you praying over there. And he said, I told Gloria, we're not going to tell him for at least another day. The way that boy's praying, he'll believe in next month's too. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> but I went by that little house not too long ago and looked at that little house. There, there's a spirit of poverty in that area. And that's where we work. I'd tell Carolyn sometimes, I'd come home from, from Brother Copeland's office, and I'd come home, and 
get out of that old dog car we were driving and walk in this dump we're living in and just barely existing. And it seemed like every poverty demon from hell is gathered around that house. I tell her, I said, I, I think they're swinging in the trees, hollering. <laughs> You're going to be poor, 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 you're going to be poor. And I'd have to <laughs> cast them thoughts down. But we just kept sowing. We just kept tithing. Here a little, there a little, faithful. We would not even think about holding back the tithe. Wouldn't even think about not sowing. If I have to walk to work because I can't buy gas, I'm not going to use my tithe money for gas. That's right. That's good. Come on. And people don't believe this, but if you had been around Seminary South in 1971, early in the mornings and sometimes late at night, you would have seen Jerry Savelle walking the street hunting Coke bottles because you could get two cents a piece on them back then. Turn them back into the store and get two cent deposit. I walked seminary south hunting Coke bottles so I could buy my baby's milk. But you know what? The whole time I was doing that, I wasn't crying. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. As far as I was concerned, I am leaving Egypt. I am leaving Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am leaving Egypt. I'm headed for the promised land. Praise God. Every time I pick up a bottle, I'm a tither. The windows of heaven are going to open unto me, praise God. Amen. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, in Proverbs 11, 24, says, He that scatters seed shall increase. One translation says, It's possible to give it all away and yet become richer. But then the message translation says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. And the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I went by to see that house on purpose not too long ago just so I could remind myself of how large God has made my world. Just how large God has made my world. The windows of heaven are opening beyond anything we've ever experienced before. And when the windows of heaven open up, something breaks loose in the earth. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You receive that? Yes. Say, this is my year for a great breaking loose in my finances. And give the Lord a shout of praise over it. <clears throat> now, I'm going to turn the service back to Pastor Justin here in just a moment, but the Lord instructed me to do this. I want you to get your tithes and your offerings ready. Those of you that are faithful tithers, you probably, if you're like me, you have it ready before you even come to church. I don't wait till I get to church to make it out. I have it made out before I get here. Get your tithes and offerings ready. Those of you that are watching my live stream, you may want to participate in this. I'm sure there's a, there's a place on there that you can go to for your sowing and your giving. I'm not, I'm not asking you to take your tithes out of your local church. You put them there. But the Lord may instruct you to sow something over and above the tithe, which is an offering, praise God. Get your tithes and offerings ready. And the Lord said to me, I want you to have them do it literally. Bring the tithe. Bring the tithe. We could just pass the offering containers and that's fine. But I just specifically heard him say, tell them literally to bring their tithe and offering. So what we're going to do is ask the praise and worship team to return. And I'm going to ask the ushers to place uh, offering containers here on the platform all the way across. And I'm going to lead you in a confession, a declaration that the Lord had me to write out this morning. 
and I want you to say this. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you get your tithes and offerings ready, go ahead and stand to your feet if you're ready. Hold it up. Say out loud, Lord, I bring you my tithes and offerings. Just as you instructed me in your word. I do so not as a sacrifice, but as a privilege in honor of all the goodness you have poured out on me. This is not a one-time experiment with me, but from this day forward, a way of life. I am a tither. I'm a faithful tither. And now I stand on your word for 2016. And I'm expecting the windows of heaven to open unto me and a great breaking loose of financial blessing to come my way to the point that I'm not able to contain it all. I receive it by faith, in Jesus' name, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring your tithe and place it in the container. And let's just worship the Lord as we do so. Praise God. Let's believe that a great breaking loose is going to take place in your finances this year. Hallelujah. God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. You know, uh, w w when I woke up this morning, there was, a, there was a quote that was on the inside of my heart, and it's so awesome how when God had placed on Dr. Savelle's heart to minister to us this morning. But there was a quote written by the by by, by name of Wayne Myers, and he was a missionary in Mexico, and, and he had this statement. He says, everything, and this is how what, what we'll quote in his book, he says, everything in my hand is a seed. Everything in God's hand is a harvest. Everything in my hand is a seed, and everything in God's hand is a harvest. And as I was praying about it, the Lord said, said, people need to get a revelation of what they have and what I have. 
Let me say that again. He says, my people need to get a revelation of what they have, but they need to get a revelation of what I have. Let me say that again. You need to get a revelation of what you have and get a re revelation of what God has. Amen. Everything in your hand is a seed. Everything in God's hand is a harvest. Now, I, I want to read a scripture to you real quick because this, this is just exactly what the Holy Spirit told me this morning as well, what my part is in the service. In the scripture in 1 Chronicles 29, this is David. And this is after David had received offerings on building the house of God. This is, and he said they were bringing everything. And it was almost, he had the same point. You, you got to, you know, this, this, this is enough. And here in verse 10, this is his prayer to God. It says, wherefore David blessed the Lord. What? Because of the people's offerings. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, our father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. That's what's in his hand. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. See, that's what God has. That's what I see. You, ha you might have little, but you know what? God has greatness. You might have little, but God has abundance. You might have just barely enough, but you know what? God has more than enough. Hallelujah. Thine, O Lord. Is, see, see, David was recognizing and rejoicing what was in God's hand. See, the people just sowed what was in their hand, but now God was saying, hey, we trust you because we know what's in your hand. Hallelujah. And he says, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all. Now listen, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. What He what, opens the windows of what? Heaven. And he says, all that's in heaven and the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted and head above all. See, he's recognizing what's in your hand and what's in God's hands. And verse 12 says, both riches and honor come of thee. And you get that. Riches and honor come from thee. Riches and honor come. See, what's in your hand and what's in God's See, that's what Dr. Savell's been talking about the whole morning. What's in your hand and what's in God's hand. See, what's in your, what's in your God is what God's trusting you with. But you know what? What's in his hand on the other side of that is abundance. Hallelujah. Opening the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. So David was saying, saying, thy riches and honor come from thee, and thou reignest over all. Now listen to this. And in thine hand, hallelujah, is power and might. Now listen to this. And in thy hand it is to make great. In your hand, hallelujah, is to make great and to give strength unto all. I'm telling you, what's in your hand and what's in God's hand. And I see God's hand. And as we were during worship, I just felt God's hand over this place. I felt God's hand over you. And he's saying, my hand is open. What's in your hand? I'm looking for trust. I'm looking for faith. You know, it's even with that man that brought his paralyzed son to Jesus. And, and, and he said, and, and Jesus talked to him about, about unbelief. And he, said, and, and, and he said, help my unbelief. He said, I believe, help my unbelief. See, some of you here this morning is taking a step of what you sow today. And it's going to take a faith. Okay, a faith, God. All right, I'm going to start tithing. That's a faith step. But all of a sudden, you saw, what did that man say? Help my unbelief. Meaning, help me grow in this, God. Help me grow grow in this knowing that you're the source of power. Help me grow in this knowing that you are my supply. Help me to know and help me get beyond my little so I can step into your abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. Just open your, hand, open your arms unto God and say, Father, I thank you. Say, Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. I release what's in my hand. I make a decision to continue to release what's in my hand. And because of that, I thank you that your word works. And I thank you that I live under an open heaven. 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 Hallelujah. Come. Come abundance. Come finances. Come increase. Hallelujah. Just start rejoicing Him and just start praising Him and start exalting Him in this place. Hallelujah. We rejoice in you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Amen. You see this word this morning? So glad that you joined us this morning. Hallelujah. You know, we have some visitors in for the minister's conference this week. And I'm telling you, it's been an awesome week out at KCM during that conference. So thank you for joining us if you're a guest visiting in for that. You know, right before we close, I have a, some announcements. You know, tonight, if, if you desire and you want to get connected to this church and you believe,
is where God has planted you and where he's placed you for you and your family to grow and become all that God's created you to be. Tonight we start our Connect class. That is 6 o'clock here in the auditorium. If you haven't signed up yet, I think right now we have about 20, 26 people signed up to get connected to this church family. And if you're here, you know what? This is where I want to get planted. Make sure you sign up in the lobby before you leave. We have a, a session this week. For two, uh, my wife and I will be sharing our hearts with you next week. Well, for two more sessions, we'll have some other things about the church we'll share with you. And on the third week, we have a special dinner for you where we get to receive you in the church, get to know you better, lay hands on you, and just receive what your gifts and receive your talents and what God has for you here. So if you want to get connected here, make sure you sign up in the lobby and, uh, and, and, and sign up for that. Also, on January 26th, Dr. Savell will be doing his next TV taping. So if you want to be a part of that live audience, I'm going to encourage you to be there. Usually it's about 845. You have to be there in place. And I'm telling you, it's, it's something that would change your life just to hear Dr. Savell impart to you, you know, just the wisdom that God's placed on the inside of him. So that's January 26th. And the topic is going to be walking in divine favor. So if you want to be a part of that, you can email social media at jsmi.org and reserve a seat for that. Also on January 30th, we'll have our next val volunteer banquet. So if you're a volunteer in this family, I want to encourage you to come out. It's the time we get to honor you, impart some vision to you, and share some things that are in our heart for this next year. Also, if you're interested, on, on, people have asked about the trip that we're going on to Guatemala to work, and that's going to be March 20th to March 26th. So that's you're interested in being a part of that, there's going to be a meeting directly over after the service over in the overflow. Joseph is going to meet with you and share some things with you and give you some idea about that trip, the cost, what we'll be doing, and, and how you can be a part of that. So, And also on the January 31st, we'll be receiving our first missions offering of the year. So they'll also uh, be thinking about that tonight over in our youth building, G29 meeting at 6 o'clock, that's 7th through 12th grade. And uh, last but not least, least, if you were a first time visitor with us, as soon as you got the double doors, we have some leadership there uh, that would like to meet you and have a gift for you. Other than that, we love you. God bless. We'll see you Wednesday night. In Jesus' name. Amen.